Hello, I'm Miss Mischewski, and today I'm going to talk to you about practicing your instrument in band. So what is practicing? To practice is to perform a skill repeatedly, meaning multiple times, and regularly, meaning multiple times a week, in order to improve or maintain one's proficiency. We can see proficiency as the level of skills that we have on our instrument and our skills in regards to reading and notating music. So why do we practice? We can view practicing as a staircase. The top of the stairs is our goal, which we can often view as our concert or performance. The bottom of the staircase is when we get our music for the first time. Taking one step up of the stairs in our progress towards our concert and performance, we can see this as attending band lessons on time with our supplies. Our supplies that we should be having each week is our instrument, music, and a pencil. Students should also be checking the lesson schedule so that they are coming to our lesson on time. Now, oftentimes, some students might think that attending lessons on time with supplies will lead us all the way up to the concert and performance. But in reality, Practicing is really what helps us progress and get up towards our concert and performance. You'll notice on this visual that there are four practice arrows, meaning that a good goal for us is to practice three to four times per week for each lesson that we have. Now that we understand the importance of practicing and why we should be practicing, let's talk about how to practice. The first part of practicing is creating a good practice environment. A good practice environment is free of distractions, including phones, computers, tablets, and video games. You'll also want to have a music stand and chair. Third, make sure that you have access to your music supplies. This includes your instrument, sheet music, and a pencil. You also want to make sure that you have your instrument-specific supplies used for daily cleaning and care of the instrument. Next, let's talk about creating a regular practicing schedule. In regards to setting up a practice schedule, I would encourage you to try to meet a goal of 60 minutes of practicing spread out over multiple days. For example, this could be every day after dinner for 10 minutes. I would also encourage you to have this at a similar time each week in each day so that will kind of help students get on a schedule. Additionally, it can be helpful to use a calendar or reminders for practicing. Alexa can be super helpful if you have one at home. Now let's talk about creating a good practice routine. Each practice session can be broken down into three parts. First, we have the warm up. Second, we have our concert music. And third, we have our fun slash extra music. This chart is very helpful because if you notice, the concert music is the largest chunk here on this page. This would mean that in your practice session, you should mostly be focusing on the assigned songs that we are working on towards our concert and performances. You'll notice the warm up is the second largest and the smallest section is the fun slash extra music. Every practice routine should start with the warm up. For our winds, which is the brass and woodwind families, this could be practicing on the mini instrument using tonguing, long tone, and buzzing. Additionally, long tones can be done on the full instrument and breathing exercises can be done for the winds. Percussion and winds can work on scales, rhythm warm ups, and other warm ups. In regards to concert music, our beginners and fourth grade students will find their assigned concert songs in their Bandalorian book. Fifth and sixth grade will find their concert music in their concert packets. And finally, an option to end your practice session is with fun or extra music. This can include easier songs that you learned earlier in the year or in a previous year in band. This could be some fun movie, TV, or pop music that you got from your band teacher or some that are available on my website. And this could also be a new song that you found in a book or online. Finally, let's look at the chunking strategy that we can use for practicing. The best way to learn music in band is by using the chunking method. We do this by finding a small section or chunk of music. This section could be one to two notes for maybe our beginners or fourth grade students. For my fifth and sixth graders and more advanced students, this might be multiple measures. Once you have your chunk, the first thing you're going to do is name the notes. Make sure you know all of them and you're welcome to use your resource sheets to help you with naming them. Once you know all the notes, names of the notes, please finger, slide, or tap them on your instrument while naming them. This will help you practice reading the notes while also feeling for them on your instrument. Third, please practice the section slowly and repeat it multiple times until confident. 
I have a little game that I like to play with students called the five paperclip game, but you're welcome to use five of anything. You could use five shoes, five pencils, you could even use five squishmallows. How it works is once the student gets the section correct, they get one of the item. When they get it correct again, they get a second of the item and so on and so forth. The key is though, we want students to get the section right five times in a row without a mistake. So if they got it three times in a row and they make a mistake, you take all the paper clips away and then the student has to start over again. This helps us learn our section confidently. Once your section is confident, go ahead and work to increase it, increase the speed in order to make sure that we're at the speed of our song. Once you've used the chunking method for multiple sections in your song, go ahead and put the different chunks together and play the entire song multiple times until confident. And now you know how to practice like a pro. Happy practicing!